welcome to the wasteland Just another broken man Tangled in the words that I cannot say <laughs> it's not the best packaging, but... This looks pretty nice packaging. Oh, yeah? Okay. What? Bro, not a chance. <laughs> not a chance. That's crazy. This is, this is real. Yeah, man. Apparently, what? that's the thing to do. Bro, what? That's... Yeah, man. This is yours, bro. No, they're too big for me. Come on. No. <laughs> Put that next to my foot. <laughs> this is crazy. You like it good, man. Oh, thank you. Man. You're welcome. I'm making up for not giving you breakfast in the last vlog. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty hungry. <laughs> People gave me such a hard time. We were cooking my breakfast, making it look all good. Rashawn is just over here with the camera. I was not expecting that. That's, that's insane. Bro. They look cool in person because yeah, there's, there's so many like details on there. Alright so guys, today Rashawn and I were kind of thinking about what we were going to do for today's vlog. Um, in the last one, kind of give you a full life update on everything that's going on with me and my training and all that. But what I was thinking I would do for today's vlog is address one of the two most common questions that I get asked when my subscribers actually meet me uh, in person, which is how do I deal with muscle imbalances? So people will always be like, you know, I've got one bicep that's a little bigger than the other, or one lat tends to be a little more dominant than the other and, and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm gonna answer that with my best three tips. While Rashawn was just getting some shots of the house, um, I did all my best uh, notes for that. So we're gonna go to the gym, hit a pull workout, and as I go through the workout, I'm gonna take you guys through my best tips on correcting muscle imbalances. The other question that I get asked probably just as much is how I research for my videos. So what my research process looks like. And I think it's because I've actually never covered either of those in any detail in any video that I remember. Um, so if you guys would like to hear about my research process, that's something I can cover in a later vlog as well. I can just kind of show you some of the behind the scenes for that. So we got a fresh new tub of high volume over here. I've been sponsored by PE Science for like, I think like it's been almost a couple of years now. And it never gets old, man, getting like a new, a new tub of subs. Same thing with Rise. Like every time I get a new shipment from Rise, it's like still that same feeling of like, you know, you get a new order come in. All right, so what did I do here? One scoop prolific, and I'm gonna do two scoops of high volume today. Try to get that crazy pump. All right guys, I'm gonna sip on this on the way to the gym, and I'll check in with you guys over there. Alright guys, just made it here to the gym. We're gonna be taking you guys through week seven, day six pull workout. So this is the second pull workout in my push pull legs program. If you guys are keeping track of where I am. We're gonna talk about muscle imbalances today. And before I get into my top three tips, I just wanna first say that I think most people think that their muscle imbalances are more noticeable or worse than they actually are. Um, we're our own worst critics. And sometimes people will come up to me and be like, look man, like my arms are so uneven. And I'm like, I can, like I'm a coach and I can barely even see a difference there. So put it kind of in perspective and realize that it's totally normal to have slightly different shaped muscles. So your right might have like a little bit more roundness to it or your left lat might insert a little further down. And unfortunately there's absolutely nothing you can do about that. Really all you can do is maximize on or minimize the strength differences between the two sides and maximize on the muscular size of the two sides as equally as you can. Now if you do build size, let's say in one bicep, it might slightly start to give that a little bit more peak and kind of change the shape of it a little bit, uh, but still how those muscles actually insert, unfortunately you can't do anything about that. So these three tips are really gonna focus on things that you can actually change and are actually in your control when it comes to reducing those asymmetries. I'm gonna jump into it with some quick lap pull-ins and then we'll get started with the tips. Okay, so guys, tip number one is gonna to be to improve your mind-muscle connection with your weaker side. Now, I'm of the opinion that neural inputs and outputs actually happen to be responsible for many of these discrepancies that you see from left to right. And if you wanna kinda of prove this to yourself, try flexing your dominant bicep as hard as you can, and then flex your non-dominant bicep as hard as you can. And you'll probably see that it's easier, or you can flex harder 
with your dominant side or your bigger side. So actually in my case, the left side is bigger. When I flex the left side, I can feel a much more stronger contraction than I can with the right side, this is harder. And the same thing goes for my quads. When I'm posing on stage, it's so much easier for me to bring out the detail and the definition of my right quad than my left quad, simply because the neural connection with my right quad is better. So those motor units are firing more easily. Okay, so in terms of actually improving the mind-muscle connection, I think there are two main ways that you can do this. The first is to actually focus on using your non-dominant side when performing the exercise. Um, so if you're doing lat pulldowns, for example, you wanna actively make sure that as you fatigue and as you reach the end of the set, you're consciously pulling with that weaker lat. A way to ensure that you're doing this is to actually sort of mark the rep. So as you're doing the rep, you can be say in your head or out loud if you want, you say left side, left side, left side. And if you say that in your head, it'll kind of reinforce you to actually be pulling with your left side equally to your right side. So that's something you can do during the set itself. Um, another thing that you can do before you begin the set is a pre-activation exercise. And that's not a term you'll actually see in the scientific literature, uh, but basically what it means is you'll do an isolation exercise before moving on to a heavy compound exercise. And that does actually have empirical support. Um, we see that if you do isolation exercises for the glutes before doing some kind of compound exercise like a squat, you tend to see activation carryover to the compound movement. So the glutes fire better if they're sort of primed for activation beforehand. And I would say it wouldn't be a stretch to extend that onto other muscles. Um, so for the lats, for example, you might wanna do pre-activation in, in the form of like a lat pull-in or like a lat pull-over uh, with your weak side. So you don't wanna pre-activate both sides equally because you presumably don't have a firing problem with a stronger side. Instead, you wanna focus on pre-activation with the weaker side, so that starts to fire more in your main work. Um, when it comes to the biceps, you might wanna do 10 second holds of an isometric flex. So before you go to do a set of heavy barbell curls, flex your weaker arm for 10 seconds, focus on actually actively contracting it, give it a stretch, and then go in and you'll feel a little bit more blood in there, you'll feel a little bit more of a mind-muscle connection with that side, and then go and do your uh, bicep curls. For the pecs, you could do a, a, a unilateral fly, where you just grab a cable and pull it in, or you could stand up against some solid object over here and just press against the object with your pec, and only do that with your weak side. Hold it for 10 seconds or so, get a little stretch, and then go into your main exercise. So those are two techniques that I use. One is just, uh, you, you can mark the rep or just be more mindful of using the non-dominant side during the rep. Before you actually begin the set, do some kind of pre-activation exercise to make sure that both sides are firing equally and then get into the main work. All right, so that's a elaborate tip number one. Uh, I'm gonna get my next set in over here and then we're gonna get on with tip, tip number two. Okay, tip number two is gonna to be to not only include bilateral movements in your training program. Um, so this is one of the main gripes that I have with that highly minimalistic training style where you only have like squats, deadlifts, presses, rows, pull-ups. There's nothing in there that even gives you the potential to isolate each side individually. Um, so if there's any kind of left to right discrepancy in terms of your overall movement pattern, then that's just gonna get more and more ingrained the more you do the movement. So if you have a tendency to say, have this elbow cocked in a little bit more on the bench press, then you're just gonna exacerbate that more and more the more you fall into that movement pattern. Um, so I think it's important to include some unilateral movements like say dumbbell presses or uh, lat pull-ins or single arm rows, dumbbell rows. Uh, for the biceps, do some dumbbell curls, not just uh, barbell curls. Um, because that'll allow you to focus on each side individually. Now, if you really do have a movement pattern issue with any of those big exercises like pull-ups, rows, etc., then what I'd recommend doing before you start using those as sort of like your main bread and butter, uh, you may want to do some kind of basic progression. I would recommend this only for people who have pretty obvious, serious uh, asymmetries or uh, movement pattern issues. So what you can do is go from unilateral to isolateral to bilateral. So basically what that means, using the pull up or pull down, let's use the pull down uh, as an example. What you would do is you would do a unilateral movement first. So you'd grab the bar with only, or the handle with only one hand, and you do a pull down one arm at a time. And the next thing you can do is set up both handles, but they're still moving individually, and do both arms at once, 
but you still have to activate each individually. And then you'd eventually move to the full bilateral movement where you have the bar. And now, if you did have a discrepancy left to right, uh, one side would start to take over, but because you've pre-programmed it in to have both of them firing equally, you shouldn't run into that issue. Um, so that's both a like prophylactic and corrective way that you can uh, fix for this sort of issue. And that is tip number two. All right, tip number three is gonna be to film your exercises or get feedback from a training partner or coach. Um, this is really important because, for one, you shouldn't always be looking at yourself in the mirror when you're lifting. You usually wanna maintain a neutral head position so you won't always be able to see what you're doing. Just using the lap pull down here as an example. If you were to look over at yourself while doing the exercise, you're only gonna see yourself from a side angle. So you may not see that one elbow is tracking down faster than the other side or any other kind of asymmetry in this direction. So what I'd recommend doing is looking back at that footage and kind of analyzing your form. And even on this channel, there's so many things I've seen that I'm like, my goodness, I didn't even realize that my form looked like that. So once you've identified the problem, whether it be one elbow being in front of the other or one side moving faster than the other or what have you, um, then it's a matter of figuring out where that issue is coming from. In my experience, it usually stems from one of two issues. One could be a mobility issue. So if you have a mobility issue, let's say you can't get your scapula retracted as far on one side, and you might want to address that with specific mobility drills or exercises or see someone qualified about that. The second thing is that you just have ingrained a poor movement pattern over time. Um, so something that might have just started as a slight exaggerated elbow tuck over time became more and more exaggerated now to the point where now you've got the bar on your bench press just totally tilted in one direction. In which case you need to basically totally reprogram that movement pattern. Now, the best way to do this, in my experience, is just to check your ego, strip the weight back, and really try to relearn that movement. Many exercises, the, probably the best way to do this is by using lighter weights with slow eccentrics. If you can really control and master where your limbs are moving on the eccentric, you'll probably correct most of that asymmetry. Um, and then the other thing you could apply is what I said in tip number two, which is basically starting with a unilateral movement, fo focusing on each side one at a time, then moving into isolateral, and then back to bilateral, and that should be totally corrected. Um, so that's gonna be tip number three. I just thought of a bonus tip, so we're gonna have bonus tip, uh, tip number four, after I finish up with my next exercise. So this isn't an asymmetry tip, but some of you guys running my program might notice that I'm doing the trap bar shrug here. And I've actually switched over to this instead of the regular snatch grip shrug, because one thing that I consistently found with the snatch grip is you're gonna end up riding up against your thighs and your business down here with the bar, whereas with this, you've got nothing out in front of you, so you can just shrug completely freely and you still get that 30 degrees of abduction, or I do anyway. I guess if the bar is wider than your shoulder width, so it's so much more of a natural feel for me. So I've been switching over to this amazing stretch here at the bottom. You don't have to worry about it raising up, again, up and down against you over here. So, oh. so if I had a left to right trap imbalance, I might say, let's say my right was weaker, I'd go right side, right side, right side, right side, right side. And really focus on squeezing that side. All right, bonus tip. So bonus tip is gonna be actually something pretty obvious, but I think it's a good idea to add more volume to the weaker side. So in my case, this actually applies. So my left arm is a little bit bigger than my right arm. At the end of my pull workout or my arm workout or what have you, I would add one to three sets to my weaker side. I wouldn't recommend doing more than that because for one, you don't want the imbalance to get carried over in the other direction. And then also, you don't want to excessively fatigue that body part, right? You don't want it to actually interfere with the other stuff you're doing. And then for the same reason, you want to make sure it's done at the end of the workout so that it doesn't interfere with you actually doing as much load or as much weight as you can on the main stuff, right? So at the end of your workout or on an unrelated day, add one to three extra sets weekly for the weak body part. Okay, so I just finished doing a set of uh, hammer curls and I remembered another application of that. So if you're just looking in the mirror doing your hammer curls, you may not notice 
that one elbow is tracking much further forward than the other elbow because you don't curl like this and look over at yourself, right? Best thing to do is you know set your phone down, film your sets, or have a partner look and see if you know your elbows are tracking either forward more or sometimes you'll cheat and get your elbow out a little bit more, right? So it'll, it'll kind of come one side, come out more than the other. These are little asymmetries you want to fix. And from every angle that you look at yourself, all of your joints and all of your moving body parts should be perfectly symmetrical in every direction if you're doing a bilateral movement. So that's something to keep in mind and another application for that. And that is a drawn out answer of how I fix muscle imbalances. So hopefully that was helpful. As always, I'll have extra stuff linked down there in the description. I'm gonna finish out this workout and grab a bite to eat. Oh. <laughs> All right, post workout time, man. Here we go. Oh, jeez, see that pull? <laughs> Take the door down. <laughs> and this one's heavy. It's pretty accurate. Oh my goodness, bro. This looks amazing to me right now. I'm so hungry. What? <laughs> it all looks so good. Just to compare to Denny's, we know Denny's, Denny's is a five. So, all it needs is a six to win. Man, I'm so hungry. This is actually pretty good. So not bad. What's the rating? Not bad. That's We're the not rating? on a point scale this time. Really? <laughs> yeah. 11 out of Switching 10? Switching it up. No, it's just a not bad. Subjective rating. Like tofu. All right, guys, that's a wrap for the vlog. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a thumbs up. Make sure you stay tuned for the next, the next, I always find that hard to say, the next Technique Tuesday uh, video, which is gonna be actually a back-focused movement. Uh, so make sure, you subscribe, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss that. Uh, I'll see you guys all here on Tuesday.